But yet, to make Sunday special, where you come to church and you're not sitting there irritated because you're wanting them to infuse into you something that you should have been preparing to receive long before you got to church. Your life is hectic because you haven't taken 24 hours in, in, a, in a seven day work week to just turn everything off and spend time with your kids, your grandkids, your spouse. You get 18 summers to spend with them, memories that go like that. Michelle and I, our 18 summers are gone. Anything we get now is just gravy. All the kids are out on their own. But you know, more than 18 summers, you have 52 Sundays in 18 years to teach them that God comes first by the way you live your life. And so what I want to do today is I want to take the emphasis, and this is how God spoke to me. I was was looking at Luke and I'm looking at Exodus. Yes, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Yes, Sabbath is for man, not man for the Sabbath. But the Sabbath is important. We need a day of rest. We need to put God first. He rested to be with you. You rest to be with him. And teach your family to do the same. What is so important that you don't have time to make 24 hours of your day the most critical moment to spend time in the presence of the living God? And how do you make Sunday special? This came to me in 1986 when I read a book. Her last name was Maine, hyphenated. I can't remember the rest of it. I think Julie Maine. It was called Making Sunday Special. And I was a single guy, and I'm reading a book on... (laughs) making Sunday special for your family because I was looking forward to the time where I'd have that with my family. I wanted to be a man over, over his home, caring for his kids and making Sunday special so that God would, would be preeminent in their life. And here Michelle and I are 32 years later and all of our children walk with the Lord. I can't say I've made Sunday special, but she sure has. And there's just something s- special about that. How do you do it? Well, first of all, you focus on spiritual things. You take the freed up time to read the scriptures, talk deeply with family members, visit the sick, write in your journal, plan the week, have personal interviews with your children, sing together, rest and relax, and do all those other meaningful things that the busy week shoves out. You know, my mom and dad have gone to be with the Lord, and there are things that I never asked them when they were on this earth that I would really like to know now about my ancestors, and I never took time to interview them. That's something you can do on a Sunday that's a lot of fun. You'll start to value the older generation and learn quite a bit and have the kids do it and write little stories about it. Be creative. I, look, this isn't, this isn't a demand. This is an opportunity. This, this is just to inspire something. Get your own traditions. We have ours. Play sacred music. When I say sacred music, it's, it's, it's whatever draws you to the Lord. Now, I went over to Molly and Micah's house, my daughter and my son-in-law, yesterday. Um, and, and they were preparing the house for a very special visitor. And Michelle was working tirelessly. And Molly, my daughter, had put on worship music. And I sat on the couch for just a moment and never left. <laughs> and I fell asleep listening to the worship music. And I realized at that moment that Molly puts this on and it does something with the kids and it's so special. And I started to realize where all the songs that Micah plays come from. It, it's, it's this station that they were listening to, and she just puts it on, on repeat, and it, it's, it, it just made the house peaceful. Put in worship music that you enjoy. Even little children see this difference. I was listening to, I was listening to my granddaughter, Liberty, as I'm in the kitchen eating Zonku chicken, and I'm hearing her as the song's playing. She's singing along with the words to it. And it took me right back to when Molly and Kelly were little girls singing. And it was just precious. Now it became multi-generational. Wear nice clothes. I'm not saying wear a suit. Calvary Chapel's walked away from the suit a long time ago. I don't wear one, but I'll tell you what I do every Sunday, unless it's a baptismal Sunday. I wear a laundered shirt. Now, what I'm saying is make sure that on that Sunday you put on something special. The kids know that this is, this is our Sunday clothes. 
you don't have to come and compete with who looks the nicest, but it's just a, a, a set apart. That's what sanctified means. This day is set apart. This day is special. This 24-hour period is special to us as a family. You don't have to stay in nylons and a necktie all day long, but it isn't helpful to have the visual reminder that this is the Lord's day. We seem to remember and act better and focus on God when we wear nicer clothes. It can be practical, but still make it a difference. Make a difference. Kids notice that you aren't in your work clothes, and they expect Sunday activities. Now, this is from a book in 1986 called Making Sunday Special. You can order it on Amazon. This was 86, and they still knew it back then. Stop the electronic entertainment. Could you imagine 24 hours without your television on? Better yet, no cell phone? 24 hours, just shut the stupid thing off. <laughs> Is there, am I the only one that feels like we are a prisoner to this thing? It's like an umbilical cord? Nobody? You, you just don't want me to talk about it because you're getting like hysterics. You're like, <laughs> I can't do this, don't, I'm, I'm sweating. I'm sorry, I hyperventilate. <laughs> you know, when, that's, when that first star appears in the night sky on, on Saturday night, take that phone, shut it off, and put it in the basket and go, we're with people. Do you remember when the phones were connected to the wall with a cord and we thought we were unbelievable because we had a 15-foot extension? <laughs> like, hey, it's like an astronaut tethered to the space shuttle. Oh, look at that. And the phone would ring and we'd argue over, I don't want to get it, you get it. Because we were enjoying our time together. Now, you're with somebody you care about and the phone rings are like, can you just hang on a sec, hold that thought. How did they parachute in and take over this personal time because they electronically, oh, they're in space and they're coming, so they're more important than you. Could you imagine just saying the person that's in front of you is, is special and just turn that stupid thing? Don't look at anything. Don't check your text. Oh, a text came through. Hold on. And, and how does that make everyone, you know, have you, I know you've seen this because it happens in my house. You're, everyone's sitting in the living room. The whole family's together and they're all on their phone and they're texting each other <laughs> instead of talking. Oh, it's the family text. Oh, I'll respond to that. Did you see the family text? They're, because we're family we're on the screen here. They own us. We're, tra we're trapped in this prison right here. Our family. Shut it off. Yes. The person in front of us is special. Oh, bless you. Thanks. <laughs> this is Barnabas, by the way, if you were wondering. No, thank you. That's precious. But you turn it off and spend time with each other. You know how kids spell love? T-I-M-E. You don't have a lot left. 18 summers. 52 Sabbaths makes a big difference. You get a chance to impart to them a generational truth that Sunday is critical, the first day of the week, that you put God before anything else and family is second. And this family, as for me and my house, we serve the Lord and he wants to be with us and we want to be with him. Shut everything else off. If people want to be a part of your Sabbath, they can come over to your house by invitation, but nobody parachutes in electronically. Make a Sunday box. Keep a Sunday box. This can be just an empty cardboard box with a lid decorated with pictures on the outside. You could use a nice plastic bin or whatever you want. In the Sunday box are toys that you only allow the children to play with on Sunday. You keep the box up on a shelf where the kids can see it. They look forward to opening it every Sunday. There can be books about Jesus, religious games, family games, but also construction toy, drawing supplies, dolls, little cars, puzzles, other toys. You can rotate the toys so it's always a fun surprise, and it can contain a special Sunday snack. See, that's what it would attract me as a child. I would be all over that. <laughs> and when you want an hour to write in your journal or relax, you pull down the Sunday box, and it's a source of constant surprise and keeps the kids playing contentedly for a stretch each Sunday. I was talking to Kelly because when we all went through the... Uh, scamdemic and they kept us in the house we we <laughs> we put together the most bizarre jigsaw puzzles as a family you know like 3500 pieces of a blue sky <laughs> <laughs> and we we have this we have this video 
that my son Michael, after we had finished this incredibly difficult puzzle, he's filming and he goes, boom, and he knocks it over and it just shatters everywhere. And everyone's looking like, <laughs> and Kelly goes, dad, you know, and, and they put that on Instagram and everybody went viral. It was hilarious. But we had spent hours as a family and trying to find it. And people would hide some of the pieces when you start to get to the end because they want to have the last one. We'll never forget that. It's fun. You know, Firehouse Marbles, I'll teach you how to play. Come up with games. But don't let anyone intrude and, and parachute in electronically to steal your time with your family. Because you are the steward of their lives. And multi-generationally, you get to pour into the grandkids, too. So what's left? We're accustomed to filling our life up that it might feel like a void come Sunday morning. If you keep in mind that Sunday is supposed to be a day of rest, it helps come up with ideas, and here are some, some of the things to do on Sunday that will refresh and renew you. And these are just things I took out of this book. I put it out for you. Write them down, whatever you want, or just get the book online, Making Sunday Special. Go for a walk. <laughs> Shocking, isn't it? As a family, go for a walk. Visit family. Write in your journal. Pray. Visit neighbors and friends. Write letters or cards. Read a book. Take a nap. There's nothing like a sanctified nap. <laughs> nothing like it. I mean, I'm, I'm on the edge. I don't want to live anymore. I, I, I'm overwhelmed and stressed beyond measure. And I take a nap and I wake up and I go, is that all you got? Bring it on. <laughs> There's just something special about a nap. And take a nap. When you read a book, not electronically, they used to make books out of paper. Fascinating. Turn the page. <laughs> Think about God. Read picture books to the kids. Put together a puzzle and invite Michael over. <laughs> this is an interesting one. Make phone calls to grandparents or other relatives. My brother, who's the oldest of the siblings, my parents have gone to be with the Lord. He does his Monday I love you calls. It's kind of sweet. It's a Monday I love you call. Could you imagine a Sunday I love you call for folks who never get a call? You're calling to let them know you're thinking about them. You want to share with them all the, the kids are sitting here and we wanted you to know. We just talked about the week and this is some of the things that happened. We want to fill you in and they're just touched by it. You just take time to reach out to people that time has forgotten. And it blesses them. 